So let's now move on to quantize the scalar field. So we are going to be quantizing the scalar field. So for the scalar field, what happens is that the commutation relationship or the operators that we saw in the harmonic oscillator, they become replaced by a whole continuum of creation and annihilation operator. So what happens is that we are going to replace A of K by its operator version of A of K and A star of K will become A dagger of K. And the commutation relationship that we're going to impose on these objects are going to be the commutator of A of K and A of dagger of A K bar. So we are going to introduce some constants which uh, do not really matter. So there's a 2 pi cubed, then there's going to be 2 of omega, which is a function of k, and then there'll be a three-dimensional delta Dirac delta function. And this Dirac delta function is the continuous um, is the continuous version of the Kronecker delta. And then we are also going to impose that a k. Oh, there's going to be k prime here. Sorry. A k is uh, an a k prime, they commute, as well as a dagger of k and a dagger of k prime also commute. So this will be our fundamental commutation relationship. Now, um, at the end of this lecture, I'm going to give you um, how to calculate, uh, say, a in terms of phi and its derivative. And using those, you can show that you know, these uh, commutation relationships are equivalent to you know, these equal time commutation relationships. So it's important that the time here is equal. And here there's an h bar, of course, we're going to put h bar equals to one, so they'll won't, so we're going to drop that, and then there'll be d cubed of x minus x prime, as well as phi the commutator between two phi's at the same time is zero, as well as the commutator between pi two pi's at the same time um, is also zero. So these are known as equal time canonical commutation relationships. Okay, or, yeah. Now, in classical mechanics, remember that we can always add to the Hamiltonian uh, a constant. And that constant doesn't affect the physics. This is basically changing what is the zero level of the potential energy. So imagine that we have done the same thing for our scalar field theory. And then basically our quantum Hamiltonian becomes, so in the quantum Hamiltonian, what we're doing is that we're replacing A and A star by A and A dagger, the operators. So our quantum Hamiltonian becomes the integral over d cubed k by d pi, 2 pi cubed to omega. And then we are going to have a factor of omega here. And then there will be a of k dagger, sorry, a of k, a of k dagger plus a dagger of k a of k, and then we're going to have omega naught, which is the constant times v. What is v? v is formally the volume of space. And 
this is an infinite quantity, but what we could have done is that we could have taken our scalar field and we could have, you know, um, put it inside a big box, and then the volume V would be a large number, but it would be finite. And then at the end of the calculation, we could take the volume to infinity. So let's suppose we're doing that. So that is what V is going to represent, the volume of space. So <clears throat> what now we are going to do is that we are going to write both of these terms in the A dagger A form. So we don't have to change this. So we just have to change this using uh, this commutation relationship. So what we're going to do is that we're going to um, have two terms. One term will be exactly like this term, which will add, add up to, and then we'll have a term which will be a delta function term. So therefore, the Hamiltonian will become, so the factor of a half will go away from the first uh, A dagger A term. So we have So this is the term that we had, the so-called number operator term. And also then they're going to have the zero point energy term, the ground state ter energy. But now, since we can think of the scalar field as a collection of an infinite number of simple harmonic oscillator, this is going to be infinite. Let's see if that is the case. So we're going to get d cubed of k and then there's going to be, say, 2 pi cubed. And then there will be, you know, the omega uh, will be canceled by the omega coming from the uh, commutational relationship. And then there'll be another uh, 2 pi cubed coming from the commutational relationship. And then there'll be a delta function with 0. And then we'll be omega of v. So here we can interpret the... 2 pi cubed delta of 0 by going over to the limit where, you know, instead of, you know, integrating over all space, we're integrating over box. This can be shown to be just the volume of space. So therefore, what we have is that we have a Hamiltonian, which is going to have the usual um, number operator term. And then we're going to have these two terms. One term would be the energy density term coming from here times V minus omega zero of V. So this is the um, formally infinite, these are the formally infinite terms. So sorry, this is, this is the formally infinite term. And omega naught has not been determined. So then what we can do is that we can Look at E0, what is E0? That's the zero point energy. That's going to be half times. There'll be an integral over the three momentum, uh, d, uh, sorry, um, d cubed q, uh, k, and then we have two pi cubed, and then we have omega. So now what we can do is that in momentum space, we can go over to uh, spherical polar coordinate. And if you go to spherical polar coordinate, what we're going to have is, well, we have this factor of 2 by 2 pi cubed. And inside, uh, we have an integral from 0 to infinity over k squared of dk. And then we have an integral over the solid angles, uh, sorry, the angular coordinates, which is uh, d theta, cosine of theta, and d phi. And our integrand is omega, which is square root of k squared uh, well, here k is the modulus of this thing. This is k here. And uh, so this is plus m squared. Now, this is a, a divergent integral, but what we can do is that we can introduce a cutoff. We're going to say, well, you know, this is going to diverge from this upper limit, the integral. So instead of integrating over all, uh, um, you know, energy, arbitrarily high momentum, we are going to cut it off. And this makes sense physically as well, because, uh, you know, what when you go to very, very high momentum, you're also going to very, very high energy. That means that you're going to very, very small 
length scales. So, you know, going to infinite energy means that you're going to zero uh, size in terms of spatial, you know, length. So we don't even know whether space-time exists at that limit. So it doesn't make sense to take the integral to infinity anyway. So, but we don't know where the integral should be uh, terminated. So let's just assume it's some very high energy. So we just replace this top um, limit by some cutoff called lambda. And if you do this, then, you know, because lambda is very, very high and, you know, we can write this approximately so the most of the contribution to this integral will come from this n so we can just ignore m and then we can write this as 1 over 2 2 pi cubed and then we get a 4 pi from the solid angle and then we get over here we get uh, k cubed as the integrand and if we integrate it over then get, we get phi to the power 4 sorry lambda to the power 4 divided by 16, uh, uh, divided by four, yeah. So, and if we simplify this, we find this, well, there's a four, four cancel out, and there's, um, we get from here 16, and then, so we get lambda to the power four divided by 16 pi squared. So this is E naught. So E naught is with the limit lambda, uh, as a cutoff is uh, lambda by 16 pi squared. So what we can do is that we can say, okay, uh, we can set omega naught to be, this is a constant, so it doesn't matter, to be this thing. And then E zero minus omega zero is then zero. And therefore, you know, this term drops out by that choice of omega zero. And then once we have done this, you know, what we can do is that we can then take the limit where lambda goes to infinity and then the, all the divergences uh, drop out. And all we have left here is in that limit, the Hamiltonian is just given by uh, integral over all momentum with the appropriate Lorentz invariant factor, sorry, and then um, times omega times the number operator. So this is a perfectly well-defined object. So let's make some comments. The first comment is that, you know, uh, the free Klein-Gordon scalar field, you know, may be thought of as an infinite number of simple harmonic oscillators in momentum space. So number two is that the introduction of lambda, the momentum cutoff, and the subtraction of a formally you know, infinite quantity is a familiar exercise in quantum field theory, and it is known as regularization. And lastly, you know, as we have mentioned before, we could have put the whole thing, the whole, uh, you know, system in a box of volume V and then taken, you know, V to infinity. And the way we have done it is that we found that the result was independent of V. And this way of, you know, getting rid of the infinity associated with the spatial volume V is called an infrared cutoff. So we have seen two kinds of cutoff. The ultra, this is known as the ultraviolet cutoff. 
and this is known as the infrared cutoff.